We're back, people, and today we're breaking down film on Tua and the Miami Dolphins offense versus the Ravens. Not much on that in the video, but looking at, like, the passing game, because I already did eight, Jan, uh, I thought the receivers could have played better. I thought Tua had some very good moments, but then, you know, those two interceptions definitely take down his performance, because those were on him, but I also think there was a reason for it. I think the defense played a part. They were pressing, and they were forcing, like, Tua and McDaniel felt like they were forcing things more than usual, and they're always asking Tua to throw these anticipation timing throws over the middle of the field and it was working and they did it a lot and they do it more than anyone else in the nfl but when you're playing like a good athletic team with linebackers like the ravens eventually those windows are going to get tighter and tighter and tighter and it was very difficult for them to really get anything going in those situations uh later on and they just kept trying to force things they were going down they weren't Tua wasn't taking many check downs as usual and i don't really mind that as long as it doesn't become a consistent issue like i feel like the that hasn't really been an issue for two and McDaniel this year. The whole forcing things uh, when they're getting down like that to like force interceptions, at least when it's still like you know within reach. I don't mind if it's you know, sort of starting to get out of reach and you start forcing stuff, but they did a little too early. Take more checkdowns. I feel like they've been better at this this season at least. So as long as it doesn't become a consistent pattern. And then looking at the rest of the team, like the O line actually didn't play that terrible. Like they run blocked pretty well. Pass blocking could have been a little bit better, but you know with the backups that they have in there, I don't uh, think it was too terrible or performance overall but and I was thinking McDaniel should have attacked like the outside the numbers a little bit more with how heavy they were congesting in the middle of the field but it actually didn't like work very often like and it wasn't like I know it's not to his biggest strength but those routes were not open when they attacked outside the numbers like very rarely it was like open one time and they and they completed it and took advantage of that I just think they need to have more like quick options not just screens because it's either like they're throwing the ball 20 yards down the field or throwing some screens i feel like there needs to be a little more in between at times make things a little bit easier get in a rhythm because they did come out and start pretty hot and then it got started to be inconsistent defense was going down and the interceptions as you'll see i'll get to them and really break them down and what really went wrong on those plays and it was definitely a lot into it and some on the play calling i think but Overall, not the worst performance of the season, but not good either. Need to be better, and hopefully the defense can step up because I think that very much helps out the offensive group. Even though it's not, you know, the greatest day for the Dolphins team, at least in this video, there will be a lot more positive plays compared to the defensive video because they were, you know, able to move the ball with some success at parts in this game. The defense felt like they never really had anything going. The offense definitely at least started out pretty good. And, you know, I'm showing all these plays to really tell the whole story. And these timing routes, right? Tua is reading this linebacker this is he's high lowing this defender this guy gets a little too wide he's gonna throw this to Tyreek if he sits in the middle you throw this down into the flat to Achan and what he does he sees how wide he gets he throws this with timing he also puts this a little bit behind Tyreek even though this guy has pretty good coverage because the safety is there to take that away and that's a good throw good timing with all of it and they do this all the time and they're very good at it and look at this and look at Roquan Smith I'm really showing this to look at Roquan because this is very similar to the first interception and there's one main difference when I'll get to the interception but just look at this Roquan re reads the eyes but he's not able to get there because the ball is out there with great timing and then later on it becomes slightly different and I feel like people have a little tiny misconception about that play here's the first touchdown this is a very very good play from Tua and Cedric Wilson got to give them credit to a reading this linebacker again he's high lowing him he sees he might throw this to h hand right here he has two options if this linebacker gains depth to take away you know that little double move to cedric you're gonna throw this underneath the h hand hope he catches it full speed and then gains momentum into the end zone but he gets a little too wide here his steps go away he's he sees cedric one-on-one -on -one with the safety and this is a tough throw to make like this safety is in pretty good position he puts this in a really the only spot cedric has a chance to make this uh, play puts it a little bit behind so this guy can't force it out and Cedric makes a great catch nice to see a receiver making a tough contested catch because this was also not Tyreek's best game like and you know I, I've seen a lot of people throwing some hate on social media to some of these guys like obviously they want to be better they're out there trying their hardest they've had a great season and I know this stuff can be frustrating to watch but uh I feel like people should you know lay off them a little bit too because it's been still overall some of these losses are very disappointing but overall as a year if you really look at it from like the larger scope this has been probably the best season the Dolphins have had in 20 plus years lots of positive to start out this game because the Dolphins came out pretty hot and it's a lot of these timing routes over the middle of the field like this stuff that the Dolphins do like look at this throw into these windows he sees uh Patrick Queen get a little wide right here open up his uh, hips to this side of the field he knows you but against a team like the Ravens I feel like they were trying to do this a little too often and it's a very I know this is what Tua is great at and you want to stick with what he's really great at but 
it is a tough ask to just throw these over and over and over again in between these boxes of defenders. And here I believe is like probably the start of the offense's downfall. I feel like up to this point they were playing very well. They went right down the field on their first two drives. He gets the look that he wants. He gets cover one. He gets Tyreek Hill one man to man. I mean, he could probably even throw this to Braxton Berrios who's open, but he also, you know, makes the correct read because Tyreek is wide open in the end zone. And, you know, he sees man to man. He sees this guy you know, sticking on his feet. This guy's climbing here. He throws the ball with great anticipation and timing, hits Tyreek right in the hands, and then he just bobbles it, drops it, isn't able to hang on until he gets out of the end zone. And that really, I feel like, killed momentum. The Dolphins had to score touchdowns and stay above the thing because they had to stay with their lead for as long as they possibly could because once they start going down versus the Ravens that just fits into exactly what they do like on the offensive side of the ball and defensively and the Dolphins could just not come back uh both sides of the ball started making more and more mistakes third and seven Dolphins and empty I actually would like to see more Durham Smythe they had a couple nice completions to him down the middle of the field high lowing this guy again this linebacker Tua is reading this guy if this guy gets a um any more depth towards the middle of the field he's probably not throwing this ball to Smythe this is also an insane like throw too if this guy uh squeezes here a little bit more with Berrios he's gonna throw it behind him look when he releases this ball too and then hits Smythe Smythe could have got destroyed but the guy went low thank god uh definitely a risky throw here but overall like uh Smythe has had some success even his other play which I'm probably not gonna break down was just a nice completion over the middle of the field wide open it seems I really do want like a super dynamic tight end because it seems uh, teams are definitely starting to leave those parts where the Titans attacking open more and more. Here's another risky decision. It was fourth and five. Dolphins go for it. I actually like this decision in this part of the game, and they do get it. I, I was saying, like, even before they got it, I was like, I actually think this is the right call. Uh, usually I would say to punt it, but with how the defense couldn't stop the Ravens, I was like, you have to get it. If you don't, you're going to get blown out, which they still did. And they get man to man across the board. Tua makes a probably, he didn't get to throw the ball very much vertically in this game. Uh, this is like probably his really only vertical shot. I think he threw out another like fade wheel route to Jeff Wilson. He just dropped it. Um, or he didn't really drop it. It was knocked out. It was a good defensive play. Gotta give him credit. But yeah, great throw to Tyreek. Good placement. Exactly where it needs to be versus single high. So, like this is what I'm saying. Like before the interceptions, Tua is actually playing a very solid game. A lot of things to like. And you know, you don't want him to make those interceptions as we'll get to. They're coming very soon. But up to this point, I'm like going through the film. It's just positive play. Good play. Good play. Oh, that could have been better, but still, overall, very solid game. And then we'll get to, you know, the plays that kind of really started to hurt the offense and hurt to his overall performance. And here's the interception, the first one. This one was very costly. It was probably the most costly play the offense had. So, you know, you got to give, there's fair criticism to give to Tua in this game, fair criticism to give to McDaniel in this game. I think people are going a little over the top with it, like being like, you know, get rid of them, fire up. I made a tweet that I, I need to stop tweeting stuff in response to people because then it gets, you know, it had like 300 something or 400 likes or whatever. I don't even know how many. Now people are responding to it and I'm reading some of the worst comments I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> like people wanting to fire McDaniel, get rid of Tua. It makes no sense. Like, Tua's been great this year. Um, who are you going to get that's an upgrade over him with where you're at, like in the draft and things like that? You're not going to find that. This is a tough read. They rotate to cover three, and the safety plays this. He's reading this guy. This plays this in a weird spot, and the way they both get widened, but they don't get super wide where he wants to throw this right away. This is a timing route. This is the window he wants to get it to, and you know, too, like as I was saying, all the plays I've shown, it was been all timing. Make your read. You're reading your specific guy. If they get a certain depth or they get widened enough, you're going to throw that, and he throws it with anticipation. He doesn't love the window exactly. Also, another big thing, they rush this play. They were moving the ball down the field pretty nicely, and then they rushed this specific play. There was it, The ball, first of all, it hit the two-minute warning. Whatever. The refs don't say that it hit the two-minute as they snapped it. But they still had two timeouts. Your pass midfield, it was first and 10. The Dolphins usually actually take their times in this situation. I don't know why Tua or McDaniel, whoever it was, to basically get the rush going. And then they forced this play. Now, this is very similar to the first uh, throw to Tyreek over the middle, except it's not like a, another safety right here. Like, look where Roquan is. If this ball's thrown right now to this spot, it's not picked. But Tua does an extra hitch right there. Boom. He gives a little pump fake. Now Roquan is able to get over. And, like, the like two, there people, people will say, like, Tua didn't read this guy. He's not supposed to read this guy. If he just throws the ball with anticipation, which he usually does, that's why I'm not, like, super mad about, like, the future of this type of play because Tua does usually does this very well. It's just when you're asking them to do it all the time, it is very, very difficult to do it every single time. 
and then the ball gets one-handed snag. Great play by Roquan Smith. Got to give him credit. And even, you know, they just rush this play. Even if he throws the ball right here, the DB probably knocks it down, I would say, is the most likely outcome. If the ball's thrown perfectly and Cedric could make another nice contested catch, I think there's a chance it's completed. Ball just comes out slightly too late, and then they rush the ball, and then that was a huge difference-making play in the game because, I mean, the defense wasn't stopping anything anyways, but this is sort of where another momentum kind of shift again. Dolphins, Tua, got, you know, gave up some pressures. Uh, it, no, not even, like, that terrible here, but they kept trying to run these long developing routes while the game's still in reach like at this point you know it's like a two score game dolphins still have a chance they're trying to do these play action stuff and you know ravens are playing they put a lot of cover two and cover six teams play strictly too high against the dolphins whenever they go single high like the ravens did in a couple of plays uh dolphins tend to pick it apart especially when they attack vertically down the field like as we saw in the tyree kill fade but teams really like to you know get deep and vertical dolphins try to set this up and Tua should take the check down. He doesn't want to force... I do like that he doesn't try to force this down to Tyreek. Uh, I don't even know what Chosen is doing. Personally, I don't think Robbie Chosen should be on the field. Uh, it feels like on a lot of these routes, actually, he was not in the correct area and the spacing was off. I think that was the case on another on the second interception, too. But yeah, at this point, I think Tua should... He's just trying too long to see if it opens up down the field. He should either take the check down to A-chan. He's got some space here. Or once he's right there, throw this ball to Ingold. And he probably could have, but he feels the pressure and then takes the sack. Just uh, things started to go wrong. They started to press stuff uh, with their play calling and from Tungavella. And here's the second interception. Dolphins trying to throw these layered throws over the middle of the field. It is such a tough ask. And this is all timing. Tua does what he usually does. He, you know, he even flips his hips open to the right like he, they have that concept all the time. And he is trying to, th like, you can see, look how muddy this middle of the field is. Look how much depth they're gaining compared to usual. This is not what defenses normally do versus other offenses. But against the Dolphins, they start making their adjustments. And the Dolphins did try to attack out to the numbers at the time. This stuff just wasn't opened a lot. It will be, we'll see a play later to Cedric that actually ended up working. And Tua is just trying to get this ball out. And this linebacker gets in the way and tips this ball. I would have liked to see a little bit of a better effort from Tyreek too, but it gets tipped by the linebacker and then goes into the safety. Also, I feel like the depth, like Chosen gets pushed so far into it too. Like, I feel like Chosen gets way too muddied towards the middle of the field. They just get more and more eyes. But yeah, Tua shouldn't have thrown this. I feel like the receivers could have gave better effort. I feel like the play call was forced too. This was right after that fumble. I feel like they were just like, literally the first play, they were trying to force a little too much. So the play calling, everything, combination of it. They got to be better overall. Third and five, Dolphins finally able to get a nice look outside the numbers because the Ravens are running cover two and uh, they're just able to attack in that hole shot right here. Tyreek takes multiple attention right there and he sees Cedric getting there, throw it to the back shoulder. Cedric had a pretty good game. Nice to see him and Tua being on the same page for the most part. They do really need Waddle back though. Another big play I know uh, people want me to show. I mean, at this point, the game's pretty much over. But it would be nice to see Claypool make this catch. It's also, I mean, first of all, for him to even get in that position, great job from him in the initial part. To a play action, he probably could have made a read and thrown this to Berrios. I mean, I don't really mind him throwing this to the end zone at this point. You know, you're down three scores in the fourth quarter. Get as much, you know, as you need. But he just sees, he. I think what he thinks is this corner right here. He's reading this corner. I think he thinks this corner is going to break on Berrios and he's going to go one on one to the fans. And then I just don't know how when you're right there, catch, catch, catch. And then you just lose the ball last second. Just unfortunate stuff. Now, this one didn't end up really mattering because they scored later on this drive. But yeah, just another drop touchdown attempt. Last play, then break down. You know, not even going to break it down because I actually broke it down in the Devon Achan video. One of my favorite plays Achan made in this game. Just showing it to show, you know, the whole picture of how it ended. At this point, the game, you know, is almost over there's not really much else to go over at this point you know two only plays a handful of snaps after this he even gets you know the shoulder soreness injuries obviously has really hurt this team uh i think people are slightly overreacting as they always do and it's the nature i don't blame people for getting you know emotional or being you know upset about this stuff i get i was super frustrated as well but i just feel like people overreact with some of you know things that they're saying about certain players or coaches and moving on from them like the season overall i feel like people are a little too uh it's a little too much recency bias like i feel like, like after a win people are on top of the world and th that's fine too but people i think will overreact in the opposite direction and then when they lose it's like the complete 
opposite as well negative end of the world get rid of you know your coach your quarterback like everyone will always be trying to blame Tua and McDaniel for these these wins and these losses and uh, like they'll give them credit for the wins but then they also get most of the hate for the losses well I don't think that's always the case even in wins like this specific loss is more on the defense in my opinion and that's probably the first time it's been like that in a while some of the other losses were more either mixed or somewhere on the offense uh and this wasn't to his it wasn't to his worst game of the season I've actually seen him play potentially worse in like a win I think you know maybe that Giants game he was even worse in and we won that game pretty convincingly but they were playing a much worse team but I just think you know would like to see him step up a little bit more the Bills game is a big test uh want to win that game just for positioning seating you want to win the division if they do lose though it depends how they lose it wouldn't be the end of the world in my opinion because you're still in the playoffs once it, at the end of the day once you get to the playoffs it doesn't really matter where you are you just beat the team in front of you uh so uh overall not the greatest week for the Dolphins. Probably going to focus after this uh, on some random stuff and then get to the Bills preview, offense, defense later in the week. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.